even though Christ, being on that cross, dying as a man. And let me say that again. The only way I can put this is that one of us was on that cross as well. The pain we would feel is the same pain that Christ felt. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. This morning, I want to talk to you as preparations for Easter about the thieves on the cross. I never thought about that before until I heard something that uh, Al Carper sent me. Uh, there's something different about the, about the thief, but then I got to do some looking and, and got a real blessing from this. Uh, in Luke chapter 23, verse 39, it says, And one of the malefactors, which was the, the thief, which were hung, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself. But the other answered, rebuked him, saying, Does thy now, does not thou fear God? seeing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when I, when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thy be with me in paradise. Two thieves are next to Christ, one on each side of him. Now, it's interesting what took place there uh, between those three crosses. Stuff I never thought about before. I mean, you know a little bit about what's going on. But here's the way it starts out. Mark chapter 15, verse 32. says, this is the people talking that are down, you know, watching and uh, while they're on the cross. And it says, let Christ, the Messiah, the king of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and trust in and rely on him and adhere to him. Those who were crucified with him also revolved and reproached him. Now, interesting, not just the people, but both thieves are saying the same thing. Okay, keep that in mind. They wanted proof that Christ was who he said he was. Now, you would think there would have been enough proof with all the stuff he did before he got to the cross. But now they're saying, if you come down, we'll all believe. There's no problem. But you know something? This happened with Doubting Thomas. When Christ rose again and came to the disciples the first time, Thomas was not there. And they all saw Christ talk. And so later they told Tom, Hey man, you, I'm not going to believe this unless I see the prints in his hands and his uh, feet in his side. I'm not going to believe. And in John chapter 20, verse 20, 29, this is when he, Thomas actually sees Christ and sees all this stuff. And this is Jesus' response to him. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. And that's where we are today, is it not? We can read about it, but we don't see the physical thing. Matthew chapter 20. Well, what about the robbers themselves? Let's go back to them a minute. Matthew 27, 44 says this. And the robbers who were crucified with him also abused and reproached uh, and made sport of him the same way. So, in other words, it's clarifying the fact that they were saying the same thing the crowd was saying. Okay? Now, something happens here because they're both saying it now. The scripture is clear that they're both doing it. But then something happens. One of the thieves saw and heard something that day that changed his mind. And that thief was listening and he was watching what was happening. So he saw Christ. What did he do? What changed his mind? That, that got a hold of me. Let's look at what happened while Christ was on the cross. Number one, Luke twenty three thirty four. It says there that Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now that thief heard him pray. Okay? Something was changing in that thief's life. 
as, and obviously the Holy Spirit's talking to him. And he saw Christ, who he really was. Then next, the thief, uh, the next thing the thief sees is in John 19, 26. He sees another thing. Now think about this. They're hurting. They're, 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 it's, it's not easy being hung with nails. You're, all your weight's against the nails. Your body and all. I mean, they're in terrific pain up there. And here's the next thing Christ does. In John 19, 26. So Jesus, seeing his mother there, and the disciples whom he loved standing near, says to his mother, Woman, see your son. Then he said to the disciples, See your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her in as his own. So he went as far as to ask forgiveness to all that was taking place. He takes care of his mother while he's in all that pain on the cross. And I believe at this point, the thief is really starting to see this man is who he says he is. He's done, and he, remember, at the beginning, what's he say to the other thief? He's done nothing wrong. Nothing toward being there. Luke 23, 40. But the other answered and rebuked him, saying, and this is what we just read, Dost thou not fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? We indeed justly, for we receive due reward. Now, this is important. That he says what he says here, and this is an important part of salvation. The thief knows Christ has done nothing wrong, number one. Now think about this. How does he know all this from just what he heard? Well, if it's like Christ. Now Christ was in prison for a long time. I mean, they captured him, put him in there, they went through a bunch of uh, you know, torment, asking him questions, and then they took him out and hung him. So let's assume the same thing happened with the thief. Okay? So what I'm assuming at this point is the thief, without while he's being a thief, heard of Christ. I mean, it was everywhere, was it not? People were in groves from cities coming out, the scripture says. So that thief had to have heard that he was healing people, raising the dead, feeding people. He hadn't have heard all those rumors. So now everything's coming together for this thief. He's heard, now he sees Christ in action, praying and asking forgiveness for all the people, including himself. And then he prays and takes care of his mom. And I believe he's seeing something is happening here. He's finally realizing that, number one, that Christ has got to be the Son of God. This is really for real. Remember, he also sees the darkness of the sky. Remember, God, when, uh, when God the Father withdrew from Jesus, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But how does he know by the way Christ conducted himself what he did? He observed. He saw it. He most likely heard, like I said. And next, Christ asked, uh, he asked Christ to save him. And what's interesting here is in Luke 23, 42 again, and he says to Jesus, Remember me when thou goest into thy kingdom. He heard the Spirit of God talking to him. Then something special happens. And in Luke 23, 43, Jesus says unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, I like this word, today, not sometime in the future, but today you're going to be with me in paradise. What a blessing that God would accept anyone who believes in him, no matter how bad a thief a uh, person might be. That thief lived a life of crime, and when the Holy Spirit got a hold of him, his heart changed, and he started to change, and he ends up getting saved. Even though Christ, being on that cross, dying as a man, and let me say that again, the only way I can put this is if one of us was on that cross, as well. The pain we would feel is the same pain that Christ felt while he was up there. So it was not he, just because he was God, he was man too. So he was suffering. And yet he thought of the people, asked forgiveness, took care of his mom.
In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore, we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. One thing we have to understand more and more is there's no plateau, plateau for a Christian. If you're not growing and going upwards, you're going backwards. And God is warning us here, all of us, that take heed, earnest heed. Just don't listen of the things you have heard. Apply them, use them in your life, lest we drift away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read two sections and... uh, It came from a website called God Questions website. It's a Christian website. Uh, They say it's so neat. I want to read word for word the the quote. It's a couple paragraphs, but here's what it says. Listen to this. It is remarkable that while in the excruciating and mind-numbing torment of the cross, the Son of Man (coughs) had the heart, mind, and will to pray for others. Yet it is a miracle that one thief, while in agony himself, heard the Spirit of God call him to repentance and accept acceptance of the forgiveness of God was just about to provide through the death of Christ. While the disciples were abandoning the Lord, and if you think about this, now when they went to get Christ, a lot of them ran away. Now some did stay and were at the cross. This man answered the call. His sins were forgiven, including the blasphemy against the Son of God, which he did to start off with on the cross. Now, he didn't blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, what we read in Scripture. In other words, he was making fun. He was, you know, testing him. And then it says here, pick it up, the other thief rejected Jesus is remarkable in its own right. While being tormented on the cross, literally joined his tormentors in insulting the savior, savior of the world. And he most likely did so because he wanted the tormentors to think he was just like them. Joined to the world and with no love for God. Not only was this man next to the Savior, he heard the man pray. He witnessed the salvation of the other thief. He saw the world go dark. And he heard the testimony of the Son, but his pride kept him from submitting to the only one who could save him. And when and he one day will bow to the name he mocked, he will be doing so reluctantly and while he was in torment. Philippians two nine says, Wherefore God I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but the scripture here, wherefore God also has highly exalted him, talking about exalting Christ, and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, kneels, shall bow, of things, now listen to this, in heaven, the things in earth, and the things under the earth, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and the glory of God the Father. Now, it's easy to realize that's what's happening in heaven. We can also comprehend it will happen on earth. But he's talking about hell here. Everybody that didn't get saved is going to be on their knees acknowledging Jesus Christ is Lord one day. I'm going to pick up with the, with the quote here. When that, t- that time comes, everyone will realize who Christ is. And at that time, it will be too late. What we learn from the saved thief on the cross is that we are all sinners in a need of a Savior. And no matter the number of our sins, and no matter if we or the world think our sins are minor or extreme, it is never too late to repent and accept the free gift of salvation. Moreover, as long as someone still has a mind and a will to choose life over death, it is not too late to proclaim the gospel, which hopefully will open the heart to a miracle by the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, 
is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall ever boast. When the Holy Spirit speaks to a person, they got, that's the time they got to get saved. You can't go home and think about it. That's the moment you have. Everybody gets that moment. I truly believe that. The thief saw the light as the Holy Spirit dealt with him, and he got saved. He saw something. Now, think about this. He saw just a little bit. We got everything in the Bible. We can read everything he went through. Everything, pros and cons. The way he li- they liked him, the way they tried to tear him up. The Old Testament talk. Uh, uh, I just got finished reading Hebrews 11. That's the faith chapter. you got to read it. And read chapter 12 afterwards, too. But these people in the Old Testament did everything because they were because of the promise yet to come. That was Christ. He hadn't come yet, but they were relying on that promise. We got the promise. What are we doing with it? Think about that. That, that thief only saw a little bit, and it changed his life. It's amazing. Two thieves died that day. One in heaven, the other in hell. I wonder what the thief in hell is thinking about right now. Scripture says he realizes who God Christ is. And one day he's going to bow to him. I know that the thief in heaven is thinking he's praising God. Let's pray. (laughs) Father, thank you for this opportunity. It was a real blessing to, to look at this thief that got saved. God, help us to respond, to grow, to not only just to hear and be hearers. Yeah, I've, you know, I've just been reading through James. The book of James, the whole book talks about being doers of the word and not hearers. Are we growing? God, help us to grow. Help us to get closer to you. Help us not let things happen that, that didn't work the way we wanted it to work. Help us, Father, to have the faith. Help us to grow in faith. Help our unbelief, as the one man said about his son, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Oh, Father, I pray that you would help strengthen us for the task ahead, for the remainder of our life, to be all we can be for thee. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. Amen. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.